The next media that we're going to talk about for lab unit two are blood auger plates, which we typically just refer to as BAPs. This media is an auger plate that contains sheep blood, hence the name blood auger plate. And this is a differential media. It's going to allow any and all organisms to grow on this plate, but they're going to grow differently based on whether or not they have hemolysins. And so hemolysins are um, exoenzymes, which are proteins, that are able to lyse or destroy red blood cells. So for the purpose of our second unknown, the hemolysis is one way that we can start to differentiate our six different streptococci organisms. So what you do for this media is you would take your unknown organism and you will streak for isolation because what we're looking for is isolated colonies and what happens to the media around those isolated colonies. Because if an organism has hemolysins, they are going to destroy all the red blood cells around, um, around it, okay? So that's only one of three possible outcomes, but you need isolated colonies in order to accurately, you know, uh, read the results of this media. So it turns out though that some hemolysins are sensitive to oxygen. So when you're inoculating this media, you streak for isolation, but once you get to that last quadrant, you're going to take your loop and stab the media a couple of times. That is going to introduce some bacteria into the more anaerobic regions of the plate. So if the hemolysin is oxygen labile, it will still be able to work because there won't be much oxygen in that area. And you'll be able to determine what type of hemolysis the organism can do. So, as I mentioned a second ago, there are three possible outcomes when you streak and stab an organism on a blood auger plate. And we refer to those um, patterns of hemolysis as alpha hemolysis, beta hemolysis, and gamma hemolysis. So we're actually going to talk about them um, in the order of beta, alpha, and then gamma. And one reason is because it's easier to remember bag, B, A, G, beta, alpha, gamma. And by remembering it in that order, you're actually remembering the outcomes in order from complete hemolysis, which means all the red blood cells are destroyed, all the way down to no hemolysis, where there's no hemolysins, the red blood cells are not damaged in any way, okay? So let's first talk about beta. An organism is, or, or has beta hemolysis if it has hemolysins. We refer to this as complete hemolysis because all the red blood cells that come into contact with this pathogen are completely destroyed. So this means that around those isolated colonies where the bacteria is growing, you are gonna see clear halos. And those clear halos represent the area where all the red blood cells were completely destroyed because the hemolysins were produced. Okay, so with this media, because we have three outcomes, we have three different results. So you cannot use positive or negative when talking about the results of this media. So if an organism produces hemolysins that will completely destroy the red blood cells, your result is beta or beta hemolysis, okay? So we refer to that as complete hemolysis, but for our class, and you're doing your unknown flow chart, the result for this scenario is beta hemolysis, okay? Now we're gonna review these three types of hemolysis a lot and we're gonna have some pictures on the next slides. For, so for now, just try and, and kind of grasp um, the theory, like what's going on here. All right, so with beta hemolysis, those organisms do produce the hemolysins, which completely destroy all the red blood cells that it comes into contact with. 
the other two possible outcomes, they don't produce chemolysins, okay? So that means there will not be the complete destruction of red blood cells. So let's talk about how the two remaining outcomes are different. Alpha hemolysis is more commonly referred to as incomplete hemolysis. And here, the organism does not produce hemolysins, but they do produce hydrogen peroxide during metabolism. And as we've talked about, hydrogen peroxide is toxic, right? It's a dangerous form of oxygen. And so it turns out with these organisms, because they're able to produce um, hydrogen peroxide for a short period of time, some of the red blood cells are going to be partially destroyed because of that peroxide. And so around the colonies of bacteria, you're going to notice a, like a yellow-green halo. And that's because some of those red blood cells have been destroyed, but not all of them. Okay. So the observation of green halos lets you know that your result is alpha hemolysis. Okay. Now your interpretation is the why or the so what. So what does it mean if it's alpha hemolytic? What does it mean if there's green halos? It means that the organism does not produce hemolysins, but it does produce hydrogen peroxide, which partially destroys red blood cells. Okay, so that's outcome number two. The third outcome is gamma hemolysis. And organisms that are gamma hemolytic do not produce hemolysins and they do not produce hydrogen peroxide. So with these organisms, the red blood cells are not damaged or changed at all. So all the red blood cells remain intact. So you're not going to see any halos because there's been nothing done to those red blood cells. Okay. So what you're looking for, your observations, are the presence or absence of a halo. If there is a halo, you have to describe it. Is it a clear halo or is it a yellow-green halo? Okay, so remember, your observations are what you see. Your results are going to be either beta, alpha, or gamma. And then your interpretation is essentially the description of what's happening with beta hemolysis, okay? Hemolysins were produced, they completely destroyed the red blood cells. So everything we just talked about. So remember for this media, you're going to do streaking for isolation and then you will stab just a couple times the last quadrant in case you have any oxygen labile hemolysins. So when you take this media out of the incubator, you're gonna hold it up to the light so you can look for halos, okay? And you're only going to make your interpretations based off the isolated colonies. So even though that's the case, um, the picture on the next slide is going to be where there's not isolated colonies because for this next slide, I want you to just see how the media changes for each of these three outcomes, beta, alpha, and gamma. So let's take a look at that. So three different organisms were streaked onto a blood auger plate. And now normally, if you were in the lab, you would put one organism on one plate because you'd be trying to get isolated colonies. But a lot of people struggle with determining which type of hemolysis is happening. So I wanted to put a side-by-side -side comparison of the three different outcomes on one single plate. So on the left is beta hemolysis. If you look at this bottom of this plate down here where you don't see any growth, that's the normal blood red color of this media. So what you're gonna do is always compare this bottom part of the plate with the color of the media where bacteria have grown. So if you look where organism A was streaked, do you see how there's no more blood red color where there's bacteria? That's because organism A is beta hemolytic. That means it produces hemolysins, which completely destroyed the red blood cells. 
Now this plate was put on a light source, which is why it kind of appears like a yellowish color. If you were to hold the plate up in the air, you would be able to physically see straight through that media. It's completely clear because all of those red blood cells have been destroyed. Okay, so you'll see a really good picture of the clear halos on the next slide. This plate was placed on a light box. So what you're really seeing is all the light shining through the media for organism A. All right, so now I want you to actually look at the far right for organism C. So again, you're going to compare the color of the media at the bottom of the plate, where it's blood red, and you're going to compare that blood red color to the color of the media where you see organism C streaked. Do you see how that media is still dark red? There's been no destruction of red blood cells whatsoever. So organism C is gamma hemolytic. No hemolysins were produced, no hydrogen peroxide was produced, so all those red blood cells are still happy and healthy in that media. Okay, so those are the two extremes. Beta hemolytic completely destroys red blood cells, which is organism A, whereas organism C is gamma hemolytic and there's no destruction of red blood cells. So now let's take a look at organism B which exhibits alpha hemolytic, or I'm sorry, alpha hemolysis, which is going to turn the media a kind of yellowy greeny color. I don't know why I said yellowy and greeny instead of yellowish greenish, but that's okay. The point is with organism B, which is showing alpha hemolysis, there is some destruction of the red blood cells. Okay, so that's why you get this kind of intermediate color change. It's not clear, but it's not blood red. It's somewhere in between. So remember, with alpha hemolysis, there are no hemolysins produced, but these organisms do produce hydrogen peroxide, which will partially destroy red blood cells. Okay, so again, we're looking for the color of the media around bacterial growth. So on the next slide, we're going to look just at beta hemolysis. And again, ideally, we want to be looking at isolated colonies. So you'll notice what's great about this picture is if you look where my mouse is pointing, you can see where all the red blood cells have been destroyed. You can see that clear color for the media. Okay. So again, you want to look at isolated colonies. And so you can see where the arrow is pointing, the little dot is the actual colony. And you'll notice it's clear right around that colony. And that's what we're referring to, that's the halo. So again, with this media, whenever you are recording your observations, you're gonna talk about the halos. So for beta hemolysis, your observation is a clear halo. That's again, your result is beta. Your interpretation is that the organism produces hemolysins and completely destroys red blood cells. Now, thinking about our unknown organisms, we have two organisms that are beta hemolytic, Streptococcus pyogenes and Streptococcus agalactiae. So what this means is for your flow chart, we're going to need an additional media or an additional test to further differentiate these two organisms. But by streaking them on a blood auger plate, we are able to start narrowing down which streptococci organism we're dealing with. So let's now take a look at alpha hemolysis. So remember, we're always thinking about halos. And it's really hard, honestly, to get a good picture of the yellow-green halos, which is the only reason I included um, this alpha symbol that was streaked onto a blood auger plate because it really shows you how the color of the media is a yellow green color around the bacteria. But you can kind of see it um, on the isolated colony pictures as well. So again, your observation would be the yellow green halo. Your, uh, your result is alpha for alpha hemolysis. And your interpretation is that this is incomplete hemolysis because the organism does not produce hemolysins, but it does produce the peroxide that partially destroys red blood cells. And when thinking about our unknown organisms, 
notice there are two organisms that are both alpha hemolytic. So this will help you fill in your flow chart, but you'll need another way to differentiate between these two organisms specifically. Now for the last type of hemolysis, the last result, gamma, this is going to be the observation of no halos because if you look at this picture, do you see how the color of the auger right around these colonies is still blood red, right? If you look where my mouse is, it's blood red here, just like it is over here where there's no bacteria. So this means your observation is no halos. So this is going to be gamma hemolysis. And it means that this organism does not produce hemolysins, nor does it produce any hydrogen peroxide. So the red blood cells are completely unchanged. So again, two streptococci give this result. So again, you'll need a further way to differentiate them. The last thing that I want to mention about this media, this media is definitely the most complex, at least in my opinion, uh, for this lab unit, hence the really long video. But it is important to make sure that blood auger plates are removed prior to 48 hours. 24 hours is more than enough. That's what we normally do. But the reason you don't want to leave your plates in too long is that some of the streptococci will um, start to change the color of the media if they've been in there too long. Okay. And so what you're going um, to see is what looks like green yellow halos but that's only because the media it's too old it's been in there too long okay with certain organisms streaked on it okay so if you leave them in there too long you might get incorrect results you're going to look like you have alpha hemolysis when really you should be getting gamma hemolysis so some of the these tests and these media are time sensitive all right y'all i know this was a long video this one, at least for me when I was a student, I had to listen to this content a couple of times, trying to keep alpha, beta, and gamma straight. It just took me a hot minute. So be patient with yourself and make sure you give yourself time to really walk through what's happening with these three types of hemolysis. And of course, let me know if you have any questions.